It's a seventh week of war in Ukraine. How Western leaders are ramping up pressure on Russia and the growing pleas for more help on the battlefield. Plus a historic confirmation on the U.S. Supreme Court. How Idaho's delegates are responding. And water warnings are going out. There's going to be less to go around this summer. One thing experts say you can do now to keep your lawn green in a drought. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Well, good morning and welcome to CBS 2 News. You're looking live outside in downtown Boise on this Friday. It is April 8th. Quiet start out there now. Yesterday was just glorious and it sounds like we're actually going to be even better uh, for the most part today. And then we just get changed, swinging <laughs> in. So short lived, we can like live in like ignorancy bliss for like what, the next 12 hours? Yeah, it's going to feel like whiplash, guys. But <laughs> yeah. I am so looking forward to some Ooh, of that whiplash. sunshine later on oh. today. And Nate, I know yesterday you were saying we could get up to at least the upper 70s. So yeah. Is that still it on. the chance? Yeah. Uh, it looks like uh, mainly uh, uppermost and uh, Magic Valley have the best chance of being in the upper 70s. We're still going to be very mild today. Uh, timing on the front, uh, a little bit expedited, I guess, today uh, into the afternoon and evening. Uh, we still have a wind advisory, though. I mentioned this yesterday for this uh, Treasure, Treasure Valley, the Magic Valley, and Baker County. Winds uh, about 30 miles an hour starting at roughly 9 o'clock this evening as far as the advisory goes through 6 o'clock tomorrow morning and could see gusts up to 50 miles an hour. So, yeah, that's kind of the worst part part of the forecast today. Let's talk about the goods that are uh, the good that is going on. Southwest flow ahead of the front. You can see this counterclockwise rotation, the storm system here. Here's our cold front ahead of it. We're going to see mild temperatures mid 70s for highs here in the valley today. We will start to see some clouds increase uh, through late morning and afternoon. High in the sky clouds and then along the front later this evening. This is about seven, eight o'clock. Could see a spotty shower and mountains will see some spotty showers as well. But the winds again primarily and the cooler temperatures into Saturday. That's what we're going to be feeling as we head uh, outside tomorrow. About 25 degrees colder than today. So bus stop forecast 45. Not bad as you head out. Clear skies. 66 around lunchtime. So feeling really nice with some high clouds. And then as you head home, we should see mostly cloudy skies. Be, uh, be a bit breezy. Temperatures near 73. Uh, drop off. Love to see that forecast. All right, thank you, Nate. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. This is a live look along I-84 this morning. We have no accidents or incidents slowing you down on this Friday morning. But when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI to 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all your team traffic updates. And we do start with the latest on the ground in Ukraine this morning. Now authorities in eastern Ukraine are saying about 30 people are dead after two missiles hit a train station. Now the head of the regional military administration, they say that first responders are reporting dozens of dead and injured. Now the station was crowded with thousands of people looking to evacuate. Meanwhile, the U.S. and United Nations and European Union are all taking steps to further punish Russia now economically for its invasion and now blatant crime, war crimes. CBS's Laura Podesto is outside the UN this morning with the latest. As horrific images continue to come out of Ukraine, the West escalated its pressure on Moscow Thursday. The yeas are 413. Congress voted to suspend For normal purposes, trade relations with Russia and ban Russia. energy imports, reinforcing executive actions taken by President Biden. Adopted. The European Union approved a plan to phase out Russian coal. And at the United Nations, the General Assembly suspended Russia from its Human Rights Council. Russia is not only committing human rights violations, it is shaking the underpinnings of international peace and security. The U.S.-led resolution passed 93 to 24. It makes Russia the first permanent member of the U.N. Security Council to have its membership revoked from any U.N. body. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky welcomed the move but reiterated more needs to be done. Ukraine needs weapons, which will allow us to win on the battlefield, Zelensky said in his nightly address. And he said the atrocities in the Kyiv suburb of Borodyanka are worse than what happened in Bucha. There are many more towns Russia has occupied and more towns it is still occupying. Places where we must assume Russian soldiers are committing more atrocities right now. Zelensky warned Russian propaganda may be staging scenes in Mariupol to blame on Ukrainian forces. Laura Podesta, CBS News. 
Now, according to the German magazine Der Spiegel, German intelligence intercepted radio exchanges between Russian soldiers who discussed killing civilians outside of Kyiv, proving perhaps more evidence of war crimes. Now, Ukrainian officials, they say more than 300 people were killed by Russian forces in Bucha alone. Well, Microsoft says it disrupted a cyber attack by Russian military spies. The tech giant says the hacking group Strontium was targeting government institutions, media organization, and think tanks in Ukraine, Europe, and the U.S. Microsoft obtained a court order allowing it to take over seven Internet domains being used by those hackers. Well, you're looking live in Washington, D.C. this morning, where the Senate confirmed Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson's confirmation to the Supreme Court. Now, Jackson, who will take the seat of Justice Stephen Breyer when he retires in the summer, will become the nation's first black woman Supreme Court justice. Now, all Democrats voted in favor, while just three Republicans broke party ranks to support Jackson. Well, both of Idaho's senators voted it against Jackson's confirmation. Senator Jim Risch said in part, quote, her past pro-abortion and pro-labor union rulings make it clear she will not decide cases before the Supreme Court in a conservative manner, end quote. Senator Mike Crapo added, quote, I have serious reservations about her judicial philosophy and willingness to interpret the law as written. You can read the senator's full statements on IdahoNews.com. Well, after the legislature passed House Bill 790, the West Ada School District is working to get things ready come fall. Now, the bill will fund a full day of kindergarten for the school district. And now West Ada administrators, they're gearing up, hiring more than 30 new teachers. The goal is to better prepare kids for grade school. Research indicates that a comprehensive full day kindergarten program has outlasting or outlonging benefits for our students, um, creating them to be holistically prepared but academically prepared as well for first grade. Now there's no cost to enroll your child in full day kindergarten. And if you do have questions, you can check out this story on IdahoNews.com. Today's number of the day looks at whether voters think their kids are getting a good education. 54% of voters think that public schools in their area are either good or excellent. A Scott Rasmussen National Survey found a small number of people held negative views about their local schools. Only 12% rated nearby public schools as poor, while 81% gave them at least a fair rating. Well, a request from the CUNA Rural Fire District may appear on your ballot next month. They say they're struggling to keep up with demand. Call volumes, they've increased over 72% over the past 10 years. And now the fire district wants to hire more people and build a new fire station. Now, all of that will require both more money from a bond and a levy increase. Now, the fire chief says they'll have public meetings before a final decision is made on what to put before voters. But right now, it is looking like both plans would add about 140 dollars a year to property taxes of the average homeowner. Local irrigation districts are sending out those warnings about drought and limited water this summer. The Pioneer District, which serves part of Canyon and Western Ada counties, uh, says customers will get about 70 percent of their normal water allotments this year. So water managers are asking people to conserve as much as possible and water on a schedule. That means if you have a house that's an odd number, water on odd days, even numbered houses, water on those even days. Irrigation water in the Pioneer District should be ready to go by April 29th. The city of Nampa also trying to educate people on ways to conserve water this summer. City leaders teamed up with Zamzos for a free lawn care class yesterday. Experts say one of the keys is making adjustments to your watering schedule right at the beginning of the season. If people start early prepping their lawn for a short irrigation system, the lawn is going to do fine. It will go dormant and it can handle the drought. But the key thing is they've got to start adjusting how they water at the very beginning of the season and kind of teach the lawn to, to be accustomed to deeper water and in less frequent. Yeah, good advice there. Uh, the Nampa and Meridian Irrigation District, by the way, will start filling its canals about a week from now. Water delivery will start in two weeks. Okay, kind of that uh, thing I feel like we've probably been, it feels like we've been hounding you about. We're going to be talking about it a lot, I think, over the next several months. Yep. The shortage is uh, definitely there. In fact, we're seeing it with the reservoir storage levels. Yeah. We're just uh, we're struggling to get to where we need to be. And we're not going to get to where we want to be, unfortunately, with right. the lack of snow. So uh, we do have a little bit of moisture in the forecast. I wish it was like a slam dunk, huge yeah. winter storm for the mountain areas. Maybe you're tired of the snow in the mountain uh, valleys, but uh, we've got a little bit in the forecast. All so. right. I trust you way more than I trust this, but I see <laughs> snowflakes on Monday morning On Monday morning with here. a high of like 45. Oh. Like, yeah. yes. <laughs> snowflakes. Are you serious? 
I'm serious. That's it can cold. happen through June. I know it I can. Know. Denny's going to be uh, upset, I'm sure, a few more times <laughs> in the spring. Uh, <laughs> yeah, wind though today. So we are tracking some wind speeds uh, for uh, mainly later this evening into Saturday. There is a wind advisor we talked about earlier for the Treasure Valley, not until this evening through Saturday morning, uh, but plan on some breezy winds out there for Friday. Southeast uh, winds are in place today, generating some very mild conditions ahead of a cold front later this evening. So uh, future wind speed you can kind of start to see the beginnings of a cold front moving in. Here it is sweeping through the Treasure Valley. This is about 9 o'clock uh, into the evening hours. So we're expecting wind speeds of about 30 miles per hour. Could have gusts up to 50. And then unfortunately, some breezy winds are going to stick around out of the northwest uh, on Saturday. So we're still going to deal with some cooler temperatures, uh, especially with that northwest flow that's going to be in place tomorrow. In fact, a big drop in temperatures uh, tomorrow. As Denny mentioned, uh, yeah, by Monday should just be in the mid 40s for highs. So enjoy the mild conditions today. We do have mainly some mountain rain later uh, along the front later this evening. That temperature drop into Saturday about 25 degrees cooler than today. Spotty mountain snow showers will continue into the weekend. So here comes the front again as it moves through. This is uh, later this evening. A spotty shower over the mountain area. We might see a little bit of rain in some of the valley. It's expected to be primarily a dry front for us. And then with that northwest flow, some mountain showers are expected tomorrow. We have another surge of moisture, another storm system that will be arriving late Sunday into Monday and this one could generate I think some more moisture uh, for the Treasure Valley as well. How much snow could we expect to see? Hey, this uh, model, yeah, not looking much different from yesterday. So just wanted to give you a, a quick idea, maybe three to six inches of snow in some of our mountain areas, but this runs all the way through Wednesday next week. Uh, higher amounts, of course, uh, in some mountain ranges surrounding our area, uh, but we'll take whatever moisture we can get. Oh, definitely. So get out today. Enjoy it now yes. before the whiplash begins. Before the, yeah, <laughs> temperature whiplash. Yes. All right. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. Let's take a live look out at I-84 this morning. Everything is running smoothly out there. No incidents or accidents to note. But if you do have a couple extra minutes, grab a cup of coffee or tea and join us for your latest news headlines and, of course, weather. And when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI to 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. All right, coming up on CBS 2 News, betting big on the future. Boise State announces a massive overhaul of some of its athletics facilities. The big upgrades and new additions slated to become a reality soon. The first COVID cases starting to rise once again. The high profile outbreak being reported in Washington this morning. All right, our question of the day. We'll look back at yesterday's question first for you. About 60% of homeowners who have one don't use it for its original purpose. Yeah, I think yeah. we talked about this at one point not too long ago, so uh, I was able to remember it, but normally that doesn't happen. The answer, Sarah? <laughs> yeah, a garage. Definitely accurate. Mm -hmm. Lots of people using it for different purposes. All right, let's look at our question of the day today. Surprisingly, 53% of Americans don't know this about their grandparents. All right, folks, what is it? Five fifteen on your Friday. Welcome back. Local forecast. This one for Nampa. Temperatures today about 74 for the high boy. It's going to feel phenomenal out there. We do have clouds increasing throughout the afternoon and breezy winds. A cold front's going to sweep through later this evening. Uh, again, keeping some wind going overnight will drop to 36. Look at the temperature change on Saturday. Oh, yeah, reality check, just 52 degrees. That's colder than normal, of course, and breezy winds are sticking around on Saturday in Nampa as well. Thank you, Nate. Well, COVID cases, they're ticking up once again in the U.S. This is according to the CDC's COVID tracker. And as Amy Kiley reports, the number of people now testing positive, it includes more and more top politicians. Over the next couple of weeks, we are going to see an uptick in cases, and hopefully there's enough background immunity so that we don't wind up with a lot of hospitalizations. We can already see that uptake in the daily counts, but not yet in the weekly numbers. Cases these days are nowhere near the Omicron peak, and they're holding steady or even declining in some states. But these parts of the U.S. are seeing cases rise. One place with a high-profile outbreak is Washington, D.C. There will be COVID cases among uh, senior officials. There's COVID cases among uh, people who work other jobs too, of course. Uh, the important thing is that people be protected from severe COVID. These are just some of the top politicians and staff members who have tested positive recently. When news broke of House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's positive test, here's how the White House responded. We have to uh, take serious precautions. We should uh, stay masked up when uh, we feel it's appropriate. 
and just use common sense. But Vice President Kamala Harris was not masked up when presiding over the Senate Thursday. She was in close contact with her communications director before he announced he'd tested positive. The White House says Harris had consulted with a White House physician prior to her decision. But CDC guidelines urge masking after close contact exposures. Now lawmakers are off for a two-week Easter break without having passed a COVID-19 relief package. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. Now, Speaker Pelosi was twice in contact with President Joe Biden in recent days before a positive diagnosis, but the White House says no additional safety protocols are being considered at this time. Well, here in Idaho, new case numbers are some of the lowest they've been in a long time. Our state's positivity rate at 1.8% this past week. Uh, it's up just slightly from 1.5% the week before, but still very low, prospectively speaking. Uh, the state added 61 new cases yesterday. 4,892 people have died from COVID complications in Idaho. 54.4% of people five and up are fully vaccinated. Well, developing news, Ammon Bundy is in the Ada County Jail this morning, beginning his 10-day sentence. A judge found Bundy in contempt of court for failing to complete 40 hours of community service from a sentence handed down last summer. Now, Bundy, who's running for governor, claims his campaign appearances more than covered the required community service. But the judge said no and that told Bundy that he had made a mockery of the court's order. Now, Bundy was immediately handcuffed after the hearing and taken to jail. Besides those 10 days, he was also fined $3,000. Police in Star are asking for help tracking down some thieves who stole equipment from a home construction site. Take a look. These are surveillance pictures that show two men stealing stuff from a house that's being built near State Street and Star Road. This was actually back on March 18th. Uh, if you recognize them, though, or have any information about this, call Star Police. Homes are hard enough to build these days. Don't make it harder on people. My goodness. Yep, the head shake of disappointment. Yeah, I, no, I feel like, oh my gosh, you, like when you do that head shake, you, cause she'll do it, like sometimes like as a story's being read. It's really cute, but I, it's like, it's like, oh my God, I feel like the mother is, like the mom's <laughs> disapproval is coming. Like, the wrath you of know, Sarah like when you knew you did something yeah. wrong as a kid, you disappointed mom. Like I just see your head next to me and I'm like, let her down. I mean, and I didn't even do anything. I just read the story. You know, but I can feel that energy in you. It, it is. It's hard enough of so our much. market. You know, yeah. it's hard enough, you know, in our in our area with housing and how much it costs and yeah. people are trying to build houses. You know, just don't take from them. Yeah. Don't do bad things. Don't get the Sarah nod of disapproval. No, don't do it, guys. <laughs> Sandra good side. Nod. Yeah. yeah well, if you don't. she does it every time you go over there to do weather. <laughs> oh, she's so like, you, you walk it. off. She's just Camera like, blocks her. son I of a. I will say I do approve of at least the next 24 hours. I know it's going to be breezy, but I'm looking forward forward yeah, to at least getting yeah. into the 70s. Phenomenal. Today. So yesterday, it, if you spent time outside, it just it felt warm. There was mm -hmm. a little bit of a breeze, but it wasn't anything that was going to hold no, you back from perfect. staying outside. Uh, spend as much time as we could. Yesterday, we did hit 70, uh, I believe. Okay. I'm trying to remember. The graph will pull up and show me exactly what voice <laughs> you hit. Uh, 68, so oh, close really? to 70. It felt yeah, warmer than felt that. felt warm, didn't it? Uh, and we're, we're continuing our warm up. Notice we've been climbing out of the uh, uh, the cold spell. We dipped down to 50 on Tuesday, but yeah, 68 yesterday. Uh, we've been up and down, of course, typical of spring. We get lots of fluctuations with our daytime highs uh, and we're continuing that trend with a, another warm up today ahead of a front. So 75 degrees is where we're headed today with clouds later today and the winds are going to pick up, especially this evening into Saturday. We drop as that cold front moves through. Might see a spotty shower in the valley, but most of the weather is expected to be in the mountain areas throughout uh, the late uh, afternoon and evening. Now just 50 for the high again on Saturday, so back where we were on Tuesday and 48 on Sunday, even cooler. Another surge of moisture bringing a chance of rain. It looks like uh, to the valley, I think by the, the late afternoon and evening, it's only about a 20% chance. Better chance of some rain snow showers Monday, of course, with 30 degrees for an overnight low. If we do have precipitation fall, which it looks like we could, could be a little bit of snow, not much on Monday over to a wintry mix. Rain snow chances again on Tuesday, 48 to 51 on Wednesday, partly cloudy, 54 on Thursday. So yeah, either way you look at it, today's the nice day out of the next uh, six to seven days. It's just cool and a little unsettled as far as the weather goes with chances of snow showers in the mountain areas, which is great news. I wish we had uh, feet of snow in the forecast. Unfortunately, we're looking at uh, you know, inches of snow here and there, periods of snow. Uh, we'll get a little bit to add to the snowpack uh, that's up there. Temperatures are definitely swinging though, 58 today to 37 tomorrow. Just 31 
on Sunday with those mid-30s into next week. All right, I have earmuffs as far as at least okay. the next 72 hours, the next 24 mm -hmm. hours. I'm all ears, Nate. All ears, but okay. not there ready you. for that. Just keep your, keep your coats like yeah, your winter jackets. Yeah, if you want, jackets. still want the taste of winter, drive up into the mountain valleys into the weekend, right? And it'll, it'll be beautiful. Yeah, it's going to be nice. Yeah, mm -hmm. all right. Thank you, Nate. CBS2 and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. Let's take a live look out there at what's happening for your morning commute on this beautiful Friday. Very mild out there, as Nate said, but no incidents or accidents expected to slow you down this morning. So when you do eventually get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI to 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all your team traffic updates. Coming up this morning, the countdown is on to a historic launch at Kennedy Space Center. We'll look at what's unique about this particular mission to the International Space Station. Yeah, and later, a delayed opening day isn't slowing down the excitement for Major League Baseball. How some baseball park businesses are getting ready for the big games today. Two news this morning. 524, welcome back. In a matter of hours, the first all-private mission to the International Space Station, it's expected to launch from Kennedy Space Center. Now, CBS's Daniel Backus has more on this historic event. It's a space mission that has never been done before. Four private citizens blasting off to the International Space Station. And this is a, a real turning point in human spaceflight. SpaceX and Houston-based Axiom are launching Michael Lopez Alegria, Larry Connor, Etan Stibbe, and Mark Pathy on the first NASA-sanctioned fully commercial flight to the ISS. The mission is known as Axiom-1 or AX-1. Lopez Alegria, a former NASA astronaut who has flown to space four times, is the commander. This really looks like a government NASA mission from the outside. And, you know, the difference is it's a private company and these are private customers. The four crew members completed months of training. They'll be carrying equipment and supplies for 26 science and technology experiments to be conducted while aboard the ISS for eight days. They're trying to show that you can have a commercial flight to the station and it not be a joyride. It is serious research. Uh, they hope to get that done while they're up there. And CBS News space consultant Bill Harwood and, uh, says training and research are what sets this mission apart from recent suborbital rides aboard Richard Branson's Virgin Galactic and Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin. They're carrying space tourists, if you will, on up and down flights just out of the atmosphere and then back down again. This mission is going to orbit. Uh, that is a whole different level of complexity uh, and cost. This historic mission could lay the groundwork to make space accessible for all. Donya back is CBS News, Los Angeles. Show us something good is sponsored by He Gets Us at HeGetsUs.com. All right, we all need more of this, right? We're showing you something good today. Uh, yeah, those of us who work this shift in the morning get to see fewer and fewer of these as the days get longer, but a gorgeous sunset Sunset, sunset shot captured over the Snake River. Thank you to Christina for sending this in. It looks beautiful. Maybe we'll get one of those tonight, Sarah. We can stay up late enough. Uh, also, say hello to Hamper. Oh, this little guy living it up on his new bed and that crown. Can we talk about that for a second? Hopefully he won't be laying around all day and get out, get out and enjoy some of the warm weather today. Thanks to Diane for sharing that one. If you'd love to share your photos, head to IdahoNews.com slash chime in. We might even make an appearance in our newscasts. Yeah, and still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, getting ready for all day kindergarten. How West Ada is prepping for kids to head back for the start of, on their education. All right, here's your primetime lineup. And don't forget our question of the day. The question is, surprisingly, 53% of Americans don't know this about their grandparents. All right, folks, what is it? News, a seventh week of war in Ukraine. How Western leaders are ramping up pressure on Russia and the growing pleas for more help on the battlefield. Plus a historic confirmation on the U.S. Supreme Court, how Idaho's delegates are now responding. And water warnings are going out. There's going to be a lot less to go around this summer. One thing experts say you can do now to keep your lawn green in a drought this summer. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now.
All right, clear skies this morning, but milder temperatures as you're heading outside. We're in the 40s, even some low 50s across the valley. 51 in Meridian. Uh, good morning to you. 40 Garden City, 45 in Nampa. We're sitting at 51 here in Boise, even just above freezing still in McCall, about 33 degrees there. 23 Stanley, Haley 36 and Twin Falls, upper 30s as well. Hey, there's an area of low pressure. You can see the counterclockwise rotation as well as a front uh, moving in through the Pacific Northwest. This is our next weather maker. It is going to continue to drive up uh, my Milder temperatures today ahead of that front, but also start to increase some clouds later in the day uh, with some breezy winds. So this is about six o'clock. We're expecting partly to mostly cloudy skies, some spotty mountain showers. As the cold front sweeps through, we might see a spotty shower in some of the valley as well. But for the most part, mountain areas have the best chance of seeing any rain today. We'll all see wind in the overnight hours. In fact, we're going to channel those winds through the Treasure Valley into Saturday morning. There's a wind advisory in effect. We'll show you that here coming up and some spotty snow showers lingering in the mountain areas tomorrow. So adventure cast today, get out in that dog walk, enjoy the mild temperatures about 66 at noon and we'll see a comfortable 75 uh, this afternoon ahead of that front with mostly cloudy skies. Thank you, Nate. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. Happy Friday, guys. This is a live look at your morning commute. Everything is running smoothly. No accidents, incidents slowing you down this morning. Smooth sailing. So when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI to 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all your team traffic updates. And we begin with the latest on the ground this morning in Ukraine. Now authorities in eastern Ukraine, they say 30 people were dead were dead after two missiles hit a train station. Now the head of the regional military administration says first responders are reporting dozens of dead and injured. Now the station was crowded with thousands of people looking to evacuate. In the meantime, the US, United Nations and European Union, they're all taking steps to further punish Russia economically for its invasion. Now CBS's Laura Podesto is outside the UN this morning with the latest. As horrific images continue to come out of Ukraine, the West escalated its pressure on Moscow Thursday. The A's are 413. Congress voted to suspend normal trade relations with Russia and ban energy imports, reinforcing executive actions taken by President Biden. Adopted. The European Union approved a plan to phase out Russian coal. And at the United Nations, the General Assembly suspended Russia from its Human Rights Council. Russia is not only committing human rights violations, it is shaking the underpinnings of international peace and security. The U.S.-led resolution passed 93 to 24. It makes Russia the first permanent member of the U.N. Security Council to have its membership revoked from any U.N. body. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky welcomed the move but reiterated more needs to be done. Ukraine needs weapons, which will allow us to win on the battlefield, Zelensky said in his nightly address. And he said the atrocities in the Kiev suburb of Borodyanka are worse than what happened in Bucha. There are many more towns Russia has occupied and more towns it is still occupying. Places where we must assume Russian soldiers are committing more atrocities right now. Zelensky warned Russian propaganda may be staging scenes in Mariupol to blame on Ukrainian forces. Laura Podesta, CBS News. Well, according to German magazine Der Spiegel, German intelligence intercepted radio exchanges between Russian soldiers who actually discussed killing civilians outside of Kyiv. That's providing perhaps more evidence of war crimes. Now, Ukrainian officials, they say more than 300 people were killed by Russian forces in Bucha alone. Well, Microsoft says it disrupted a cyber attack by Russian military spies. The tech giant says the hacking group Strontium was targeting government agencies, media organizations, and think tanks in Ukraine, Europe, and the U.S. Microsoft obtained a court order allowing it to take over seven Internet domains being used by those hackers. Well, you're looking live in Washington, D.C. this morning, where the Senate approved Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson's confirmation to the Supreme Court. Now, Jackson, who will take the seat of Justice Stephen Breyer when he retires in the summer, will become the nation's first black woman Supreme Court justice. Now, all Democrats voted in favor, while just three Republicans broke party ranks to support Jackson. 
Well, both of Idaho's senators voted against Jackson's confirmation. Senator Jim Risch released a statement that said in part, quote, her past pro-abortion and pro-labor union rulings make it clear she will not decide cases before the Supreme Court in a conservative manner, end quote. Senator Mike Crapo added, quote, I have serious reservations about her judicial philosophy and willingness to interpret the law as written. You can read the statements from both of these senators on IdahoNews.com. And after the legislature passed House Bill 790, now the West Ada School District is working to get things ready for the fall. Now that bill will fund a full day of kindergarten for the school district. And now West Ada administrators, they say they're gearing up, hiring more than 30 new teachers. The goal is to better prepare kids for grade school. Research indicates that a comprehensive full day kindergarten program has outlasting or outlonging benefits for our students, um, creating them to be holistically prepared but academically prepared as well for first grade. Now there's no cost to enroll your child in full day kindergarten. If you have questions, you can check out this story on IOHNews.com. Today's number of the day looks at whether voters think their kids are getting a good education. 54% of voters think that public schools in their area are good or excellent. A Scott Rasmussen National Survey found a small number of people held negative views about their local schools. Only 12% rated nearby schools as poor, while 81% gave them at least a fair rating. Well, a request from the CUNA Rural Fire District may appear on one of your next ballots. Now, they say they're struggling to keep up with demand and call volumes. They say have increased over 72 percent just over the past 10 years. Now, the fire district, they want to hire more people and build a new fire station. Now, all of this will require both money from a bond and a levy increase. Now, the fire chief says they'll have public meetings before a final decision is made on what to put before voters. But right now, it is looking like both plans would add a about $104 a year to property taxes of your average homeowner. Local irrigation districts are sending out warnings about drought and limited water this summer. The Pioneer District, which serves service uh, parts of Canyon and Western Ada counties, says customers there will get about 70% of their normal water this year, or at least that's the estimate. Water managers are asking people to conserve, though, as much as possible and try to water on a schedule. That means odd-numbered houses, water on odd days only, even-numbered homes, water on even days. Irrigation water in the Pioneer District should go, uh, be ready to go, I should say, by April 29th. City of Nampa also trying to educate people on ways to conserve water. City leaders there teamed up with Zamzos for a free lawn care class yesterday. Experts say one of the keys to this is making adjustments to your watering schedule right away in the very beginning of the season. If people start early prepping their lawn for a short irrigation system, the lawn is going to do fine. It will go dormant and it can handle the drought. But the key thing is they've got to start adjusting how they water at the very beginning of the season and kind of teach the lawn to, to be accustomed to deeper water and in less frequent. And our in-house expert Nate just said that aerating your lawn early can also help too. Uh, the Nampa Irrigation, I'm sorry, Nampa and Meridian Irrigation District starts filling its canals in about a week and then water will start to be delivered in two weeks. Oh boy. All right, so the family drama. Um, family drama. My, my parents live in Boise. My grandparents live in Boise. Very fortunate to have all of them around here. Uh, you know, family helps family. My yeah. dad's working with my grandpa, grandpa on his sprinkler box. Sounds uh, like it's been uh, about a 20-hour job so far. Yeah. Uh, but, and, and my dad's not one to ask people to help him fix things. So I was like, well, why don't you just call someone? He said, actually, I did. He's like, I got to that point. But he said that the, I mean, guys who are working on irrigation systems, sprinkler systems, like they're so backed up right now. He was nice. like, that I'm not gonna get him help until the middle of the summer. Uh -oh. So just oh. another thing that if it's, if it's not on, if it's on your to-do list, you haven't done it yet, and you do rely on someone to come out and get those sprinklers turned on, maybe not a bad call to make. Yeah, no, I mean, try especially, it early. Yeah, yeah I don't know. Good <laughs> advice, good uh, advice for people. Yeah, I was like, oh, I don't even wanna think about that with my yard, so. <laughs> just There's uh, lots, yeah, lots going on right now. So, try it up, I'll uh, try the sprinkler, that I'll just try bringing the hose out and do you know that little sprinkler that fans <laughs> yeah. back and forth. Oh, I love that, that one. There that was covers one about all the grass I have. Yeah. There was the coolest one we always had up at, up at the cabin. It would follow the hose as like a little tractor. So you put oh. the front wheel on the hose and you roll it around the yard and it would just kind of follow it. it kind of oh, cool. oh, that's so wow. cool. Oh, right? That's we spiffy. Have, I don't I know how that. efficient it was at watering. <laughs> yeah, but probably at least not. it moved and it was cool. So, uh, yeah, uh, early to water still. Water's not really on yet. Kay. And we do have a little bit of moisture in the forecast, which should help us out some. So, uh, hopefully, help green up some of the yards. Mine's still, of course, nice and yellow. All the dead grass is still there from winter. I need to do a first mow, I guess, uh, at some point. Today might not be a bad day for that. Look at the temperatures uh, 75 degrees. 
Yeah, perfect to be out and about enjoy some of the mild conditions. We do have quite a bit of sunshine, especially earlier in the day. Clouds increasing ahead of a front. Look at the drop. Yeah, can you spot? Uh, it's coming in late this evening, dropping us to just 50 degrees on Saturday. Uh, and we're just in the mid to upper 40s Sunday, Monday, Tuesday next week. So a big drastic change in our temperatures as our normal high is about 60 degrees. So we'll be trending about 15 degrees colder than normal uh, come early next week. So plan on uh, breezy winds picking up later today. In fact, quite blustery this evening into Saturday morning. Mainly mountain showers are expected with the moisture that is moving through. It's kind of uh, lacking as far as moisture content in this front that it is going to uh, have a big impact as far as the temperature drop, as we mentioned, and there will be mountain snow showers into the weekend. So uh, wind advisory has been issued for the valley locations, the Treasure Valley, the Magic Valley, Baker County as well. Winds of about 30 miles per hour. The advisory is for about 9 o'clock this evening for the valley into 6 o'clock Saturday morning. Uh, earlier uh, in the day for Baker County, of course, later into Saturday for some of the Magic Valley. And then again, the front as it moves inland, most of the moisture staying to the north of us, the core of the storm system north of us as well. Uh, cooler air moving in out of the northwest behind it and a secondary or a reinforcing storm system Moving inland in late Sunday into Monday, we'll bring another chance of shower activity. In fact, that next storm you see there off the coast should bring a good chance of some rain snow showers here to the Treasure Valley as well. And we're hoping for several inches of snow in our mountain areas. Early estimates aren't showing a whole lot, at least for our mountain areas surrounding the Treasure Valley. but. Parts of Idaho should see a decent amount of snow. Yeah, and still the last weekend at Brundage, correct? Yeah, they close up on Sunday. So a little bit of snow yeah. to kick off the last ski weekend. Not bad. Get up there and enjoy it. Thank yeah. you, Nate. CBS2 and News Talk KBOI, we bring you teen traffic all morning long. Let's take a live look out there this morning. Everything is running smoothly. No incidents or accidents slowing you down on this Friday. Hope you have a good day. It's going to get warm when you do get in the car. Make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI to 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more teen traffic updates. All right, let's get to our question of the day now. Today's question, surprisingly, 53% of Americans don't know this about their grandparents. Uh, it? Where they were born? I know, where yeah. they were born, yep. where they met. Yeah, how uh, they met. Their um, how long they were married. Yeah. Yeah. There's um, a lot of things. How old they, they are. Know where they were. How old they are. Okay. Oh, yeah, how that. Oh, gosh. Probably I don't know if I know yeah. that one. Okay. Or like the grandma's maiden name. <laughs> yes, some people don't know that. Yep. Yeah, there's a lot of different things. Um, let's see. Go to, what is it? Familytree.com? Let's learn some stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Ancestry 23 well, hopefully, hopefully they're still alive. <laughs> Unfortunately, I only have one grandpa left. But uh, yeah, hopefully you know a little bit more about grandparents yeah. than we're talking about today. All right, let's see what uh, else we got this morning. Michael, where they're from. Yep. Okay, yeah. along the same lines. Uh, I like that one. Uh, their it. birthday. Oh, yeah. Yes, Ooh. that's a good guess. Not just how old they are, but I, I was like, I struggle with the ages, yes. you know, and I, I'm fortunate to have a, f have a few. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but their ages are tough because everyone's kind of like within a year or one another, yeah. with one another, but I know their birthdays. All right, Doug says their occupations. Yeah, what they did, you know, maybe before yeah. they retired, if they're retired. Uh, gosh, I mean, yeah, yeah. My, my grandparents have some cool stories in that realm, but it, you may not know. Yeah, no, definitely true. I mean, there's a lot of things that some people don't know. Yes? Yeah, yeah. Um, I would say where I mean where they met, mm -hmm. um, where they worked. There's a lot of different things. How about how many? So, well, I don't know if I'm coming up with a lot of concrete things. That's okay. okay. All right. Yeah, uh, I took me a long time to figure out my grandpa was a twin. <laughs> um, okay, well, if you think you know the answer, share with us on Facebook or Twitter. We'll go over some more guesses here in about an hour, and then give you the correct answer right before seven this morning. Yeah, and still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, big plans at Boise State, a look inside the school's athletics master village, and what still needs to be done before things can get underway. Welcome back, local forecast. This one for Ontario. Temperatures today, yeah, we're very nice and mild. Ahead of a front, we will see increasing clouds after a clear start this morning. 73, though, for the high. Breezy, if not blustery winds uh, late tonight into the overnight hours. 36 for an overnight low. Tomorrow, behind the front, much cooler, about 55 for the high. Still breezy winds out of the northwest expected in Ontario. Thank you, Nate. Well, after a long delay, ba baseball teams, pardon me, are getting ready to, for their return back to the diamond. Andrea Nanako in San Francisco shows us that it's not just the major league teams that are getting ready for the big game, but local businesses as well. Take a look. It's the Baja Fish Taco, the Baja Crispy Taco. While Giants opening day is Friday, it was opening day Thursday for Underdogs, a brand new restaurant across the street from Oracle Park. This is the first day. How are you feeling? Excited. Beyond belief. Alpedio Sai is a managing partner of Underdogs, a locally owned small chain of restaurants. We are born and bred in the avenues of San Francisco. 
and we're bringing our game here downtown, uh, right across the street from the best, the best show in town. Sai says he's called in roughly 30 employees and ordered 10 times the amount of food and supplies, hoping to hit a Grand Slam Friday. We're born ready, yeah. <laughs> And with the Giants back in town, it also means jobs have returned. I cook for the players, so I'm very excited right now. I'm like, I'm like, I'm, re I'm like, like, I'm like it's like game day for me, you know. Benjamin Reed also happens to be a lifelong Giants fan. He is thrilled to be serving up dishes to his favorite team once again. They love steak. They love steak. Yeah, they love a lot of beef. Fans have high expectations for a Giants team that got knocked out of the first round of the playoffs. So are we going to see 107 wins? I think so, 100, 105. <laughs> you know, they, they seem to think they, they can get at it again. And have another chance to top the Dodgers. Even Jennifer Cordero, who's from L.A., is on board to chant, Beat L.A. You a Dodgers fan before? Ah, uh, no, never. Oh, okay. Never. <laughs> All right, well, Boise State has big plans for the future of the university, planning to build an athletics master village for its sports programs. Now, there's a lot to this plan here. I won't try to go through all of it, but we'll give you some of the highlights. It includes major upgrades to both Albertson Stadium and Extra Mile Arena, along with several new facilities. There's going to be a new gymnastics practice gym, new indoor tennis center, new soccer complex, uh, new basketball facility, much more. This is all, of course, in the very early stages. Uh, the school still has to get approvals and funding before any of the construction can start but oh my goodness can wow. you imagine how I mean campus won't look the same they have room no, for all that not at all. I, somewhere somewhere yeah. somehow okay yeah yeah some it's way. pretty wild to think about I feel like I like you see that and I was just immediately like how long would it take to complete this will I even be alive when it's done and will I even <laughs> recognize the place when Where it's done get the funding yeah. there you go that's and, a lot of money but it to look on the renderings. I mean, they, yeah. they're beautiful. Yeah, you're they are excited. beautiful. Very and you excited. know that I'm obviously maybe, I don't want to say not the biggest fan of I know, I was saying, like, <laughs> but it is beautiful. Right. It is, I am a vandal guy, so that's why I so got it. So you're yeah. saying it's beautiful. It is beautiful. Yes, the blue. I gotta <laughs> say. The turf, right? Yeah, your move, you of I. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Uh, all right, here we got a little Mother blue. Nature's making a big move. Yeah. yeah. The, the temperature color is mm -hmm. turning blue in Ugh. the weekend. Unfortunately, it's been green and it's not even some uh, yellows and oranges out there with how mild it was yesterday. Uh, we do have some wind to deal with, of course, as changes are going to be blowing in later today. Uh, for the most part, lighter winds throughout much of your Friday, but this evening we're really starting to see an increase in wind speeds. Uh, so this is about 7 o'clock. So ahead of that, 10 to 15 mile per hour winds out of the southeast as we're going to be mild today. But then after about 6, 7 o'clock, we're going to start to see northwest winds as a front is working its way through the valley. In fact, could see wind speeds up to 30 miles per hour, gusts up to 50 uh, as we get into Saturday morning as this cold front marches through. So plan on it uh, being quite a blustery night. Batten down some of the hatches. I know my grill cover always gets blown off no matter what I do, so that might be a concern for you. Let me back up. I think the graphics just skipped one. There we go. Uh, 75, though, for the high ahead of the front. Behind it, we dropped to 50 degrees. We're going to stay breezy out of the northwest on Saturday, keeping temperatures much cooler, 10 degree colder than average temperatures, and then we could dip down to about 15 degree below average temperatures by Monday. So we're going to add some active weather into next week. The mountains will see snow showers off and on. We have a chance of rain snow showers here in the valley. And and we'll continue that threat through Tuesday. It looks like partly cloudy Wednesday back to 51. Still colder than normal Thursday, 54. Might have another storm system moving through late Thursday, Friday. We'll be tracking that. Bring us some additional moisture. 58 in the mountains. Breezy winds today. Some spotty showers later today as well. Snow showers off and on Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Even lingering into Tuesday next week. Again, hoping for several inches of snow throughout that time frame. Fairly light as far as the showers go. And of course, temperatures on the chilly side. We're feeling more like winter again with just uh, freezing, if not just below freezing temperatures for highs on Sunday. Yeah, and for people stepping out this morning, very mild out it there. It is pretty nice outside. Yeah, it didn't uh, feel too nippy as you step out with 40s and 50s out there. Yeah, just a light jacket, and you're definitely going to want to throw it out by the time we hit the windows afternoon. Windows down, yeah, that's right. Yeah, windows down, love it. All right, CBS2 News and News Talk KBOI, we bring you team traffic all morning long. Let's take a look out there at I-84 on this Friday morning. Everything running smoothly, no incidents or accidents to note. Should be a great morning commute. When you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI to 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all your team traffic updates. Still to come this morning, pedestrian deaths up sharply so far this year compared to last. We investigate the factors behind this troubling trend and show you how the U.S. is working to make roads safer for everyone.
is 2 News This Morning. 554 on your Friday, disturbing trends on our nation's roads. A new report shows both deadly car accidents and pedestrian deaths are on the rise. Daniel Backus looks closer at some of the factors that could be contributing to these troubling stats. This surveillance video shows two sisters walking on a Florida sidewalk last month. Just seconds later, one of them was hit and killed while trying to cross the street. It's tragic. It's awful. I don't know. I want it to stop. I, I want this to never happen again. Unfortunately, these types of accidents are becoming more common. Pedestrian deaths have been on the rise for a decade, and a new report shows more than 3,400 people were killed in the first six months of 2021, a 17% jump from the previous year. The report confirms what we've been saying for many, many years, and that is we have a pedestrian safety crisis in this country. Pam Shadell Fisher is with the Governor's Highway Safety Association that published the report. She says the rise in pedestrian deaths coincides with a surge in dangerous driving, including speed. You have that mix of speeding vehicles with people on foot. The higher the speeds, the more likely they are to be killed and injured. Another factor, Americans are driving larger vehicles like SUVs and trucks that are more likely than cars to kill a pedestrian. And most of these accidents happen at night. We need better lighting, so the more visible we can make them, the better. Many modern streets are wide with longer blocks and people tend to run across where they shouldn't. The Department of Transportation is now dedicating billions of dollars to making changes for safer road designs, including more crosswalks, bike lanes, and better lighting. Changes that could make the roads safer for everyone. Don Yabakis, CBS News, Los Angeles. And taking a quick look at gas prices, if you need to fill up this morning, the average price here in Idaho still sitting around 4.41 a gallon. That's about 27 cents higher than the national average in both Ada and Canyon County. It's going to be a bit more expensive, around 4.52 a gallon. According to Gas Buddy, the cheapest place to fill up, it's still Costco, as well as the Walmarts in both Napa and Boise. All have them for about 4.39 a gallon. And still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, getting ready for all day kindergarten. How West Ada is preparing to help kids get a head start on their education. And COVID cases starting to spike again in some parts of the U.S. We'll look at some of the uh, high profile figures in Washington being impacted and how that's uh, playing out in D.C. That's coming up at the top of the hour along with more headlines. You're watching CBS 2 News this morning. Your local news and weather, of course, continue all day on IdahoNews.com. We'll be right back. Take the news with you on the radio, 670 KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. to news a seventh week of war in Ukraine, how Western leaders are ramping up pressure on Russia and the growing pleas on the ground for more help on the battlefield. Plus a historic confirmation in the U.S. Supreme Court, how Idaho's delegates are responding. And water warnings are going out. There's going to be less to go around this summer. One thing experts say you can do now to keep your lawn green in a drought. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Well, good morning and welcome to CBS 2 News. You're looking live outside in downtown Boise on this Friday. It is April 8th. Nice, quiet start to what should be a gorgeous day for the yeah. big chunk of the day. Yes, until got like a limited window here, Sarah. <laughs> yeah, then the winds blow in yeah. and then the roller coaster really begins. Nate? Yay! Yeah, we're, yeah, we're still on the <laughs> upward trend. So yeah, we've got a big, uh, big drop coming uh, with temperatures. Uh, here's a look at the forecast for this afternoon. So we do have clouds that are going to increase. We're clear this morning. Temperature wise, uh, comfortable 75 degrees is expected uh, throughout the afternoon. Uh, we will start to see some breezier winds. So southeast winds this morning, northwest winds later in the evening hours. And we could see a spotty shower too in parts of the valley as this cold front you see here starts to move into our area. So there's a storm system at our doorstep. Some high clouds might start to stream in uh, again through midday. This area of low pressure sweeping that front through. It's mainly a dry front for the valley. 
Again, maybe a spotty shower or two. Most of the weather, if any, is expected to be over the mountain areas as far as precipitation goes. We're all going to see some significant weather, though, as far as the temperature change and some stronger winds into the evening and overnight hours. In fact, there's a wind advisory for the Treasure Valley starting at 9 o'clock this evening through Saturday morning for 30 mile per hour winds gusts up to 50. This is about 10 o'clock. Note the uh, showers primarily move out with the front. Northwest flow will bring some additional moisture into the mountain areas into Saturday, so we have a chance for some additional snow. Bus stop forecast showing about 48 as you get picked up, so pretty mild this morning considering the time of morning. 66 around lunchtime, some high clouds, and again about 73 with breezy winds as you head home. Thank you, Nate. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. This is a live look out at the I-84 corridor. Everything is running smoothly out there. A few more headlights as we're heading into, again, the 6 o'clock hour. But no incidents or accidents expected to slow you down this morning. So when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI to 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all your team traffic updates. And we start with the latest on the ground this morning in Ukraine. Authorities in eastern Ukraine, they say 30 people are dead after two missiles hit a train station. Now, the head of the regional military administration says first responders, they're reporting dozens of dead and injured. Now, the station, it was crowded with thousands of people looking to evacuate. Now, in the meantime, the U.S., United Nations and European Union, they are all taking new steps to further punish Russia. Now, for... CBS 2's Laura Podesta is outside the UN this morning and she has the latest. As horrific images continue to come out of Ukraine, the West escalated its pressure on Moscow Thursday. The yeas are 413. Congress voted to suspend well, normal trade relations with Russia and ban president. energy imports, reinforcing executive actions taken by President Biden. Adopted. The European Union approved a plan to phase out Russian coal. And at the United Nations, the General Assembly suspended Russia from its Human Rights Council. Russia is not only committing human rights violations, it is shaking the underpinnings of international peace and security. The U.S.-led resolution passed 93 to 24. It makes Russia the first permanent member of the U.N. Security Council to have its membership revoked from any U.N. body. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky welcomed the move but reiterated more needs to be done. Ukraine needs weapons, which will allow us to win on the battlefield, Zelensky said in his nightly address. And he said the atrocities in the Kiev suburb of Borodyanka are worse than what happened in Bucha. There are many more towns Russia has occupied and more towns it is still occupying. Places where we must assume Russian soldiers are committing more atrocities right now. Zelensky warned Russian propaganda may be staging scenes in Mariupol to blame on Ukrainian forces. Laura Podesta, CBS News. Now, according to German magazine Der Spiegel, German intelligence, they intercepted radio exchanges between Russian soldiers who did discuss killing civilians outside of Kyiv, providing perhaps more evidence of war crimes. Now, Ukrainian officials, they say more than 300 people were killed by Russian forces in Bucha alone. Well, Microsoft says it disrupted a cyber attack by Russian military spies. The tech giant says the hacking group Strontium was targeting government agencies, media organizations, and think tanks in Ukraine, Europe, and the U.S. Microsoft obtained a court order allowing it to take over seven Internet domains being used by those hackers. Well, you're looking live in Washington, D.C. this morning, where the Senate approved Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson's confirmation to the Supreme Court. Now, Jackson, who will take the seat of Justice Stephen Breyer when he retires in the summer, will become the nation's first black woman Supreme Court justice. Now, all Democrats voted in favor, while just three Republicans broke party ranks to support Jackson. Well, both of Idaho's U.S. senators voted against Jackson's confirmation. Senator Jim Risch said in part, quote, her past pro-abortion and pro-labor union rulings make clear that she will not decide cases before the Supreme Court in a conservative manner, end quote. Senator Mike Crapo added, quote, I have serious reservations about her judicial philosophy and willingness to interpret the law as written. You can read the senator's full statements, both of them, on IdahoNews.com. Well, after the legislature passed House Bill 790, West Adas is now working to get things ready come fall. Now, that bill will fund all-day kindergarten across the state. And now West Ada administrators, they're gearing up, hiring more than 30 new teachers. The goal, it's to better prepare kids for grade school. 
Research indicates that a comprehensive full day kindergarten program has outlasting or outlonging benefits for our students, um, creating them to be holistically prepared but academically prepared as well for first grade. With this bill, there's no cost to enroll your child in full day kindergarten. And if you do have questions, you can check out this story on IdahoNews.com. Local irrigation districts are sending out warnings about drought and limited water this summer. The Pioneer District, which serves part of Canyon and Western Ada counties, says their customers will get about 70% of their normal water this year. Water managers are asking people to conserve as much as possible and water their properties on a schedule. So that means odd numbered houses water on odd days only, even numbered homes water on even days. Irrigation water in the Pioneer District, by the way, should be ready to go by April 29th. Over in Nampa, city leaders are trying to educate people on ways to conserve water as well. City leaders teamed up with Zamzos for a free lawn care class. Experts say one of the keys here is making adjustments to your watering schedule right in the beginning of the season. If people start early prepping their lawn for a short irrigation system, the lawn is going to do fine. It will go dormant and it can handle the drought. But the key thing is they've got to start adjusting how they water at the very beginning of the season and kind of teach the lawn to, to be accustomed to deeper water and in less frequent. So the Nampa and Meridian Irrigation District starts filling its canals about a week from now and then the water will start delivering in about two weeks. All right, we've talked a lot about drought. Uh, yep. the past, lot, it feels yes. like the past like several weeks, and you'll get more of it. Uh, wanted to tell you about our pet of the week. Yes. Uh, we uh, dropped the ball it's early. We forget these things <laughs> sometimes. Did. Totally forgot to put the pictures in our show. Um, this is a cute yeah, dog you're gonna that we're talking see about. Him. His name yeah. is Bonsai. He is Bonsai. a two-year-old pit bull terrier blend. Uh, so cute. Uh, he, all of his photos are on our website. That story's up right now, but he is a total sweetheart. He actually came from an overcrowded shelter in Louisiana. Oh, okay. He's looking for a home. Um, he is a sweet boy is how he's described. Um, he, he is deaf, yeah. but they say it does not slow him down from uh, just, you know, I don't know, loving on everyone and everything. Yes. So we have some really sweet pictures. No, really, you want to check Bonsai. them out. He's looking for his forever home. So if you think you have room for Bonsai, definitely check it out. And one of the cool things about this adoption, too, is that they'll actually give you some time with a professional trainer yes. and Bonsai, which is huge to I be able to that. kind of have that bonding time with your dog, yeah. to be able to get to trust you, you know, right. that kind of thing, especially being deaf for yeah, deaf dogs. Absolutely. So. That'll be so helpful. He is a sweetheart. I just, I can't get enough of his face. Really uh, you can reach out to the West Valley Humane Society if you want more cool. information. I know Nate is looking to inherit yeah. four dogs. I think is that four. how many you want to end up with? Well, at least one for child, so maybe just three. <laughs> farm. Nate, I'm doesn't, it, so. Nate doesn't have any dogs. He says his kids are his dogs. <laughs> my so. kids take up enough of my energy that I don't Come need on, just, pets as well. Come on, just what's the next three that's more fair. dogs? Actually, my kids, they want like hamsters and bunnies. So they haven't mentioned oh, dogs in a while. They've changed. Well, yeah, because you haven't let them grow up Fortu around them. Fortunately, it's not snakes or things like that. <laughs> yes, yet, it, so. could, it could be <laughs> that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, let's kind of switch gears. Yeah, maybe yeah. you're going to take the dog out for a walk this morning. Bonsai could use a walk if you've got. Uh, room in your home. Uh, we do have mild temperatures this morning ahead of a cold front that's moving in later today. So plan on breezy winds out of the southeast. That's going to help drive up our temperatures uh, at the higher elevation. Southwest flow is in place and then the front. You can kind of see it with future wind speeds. Uh, some of the graphic here we will see the front move in later this evening, generating some stronger northwest winds. A wind advisory has been issued for the Treasure Valley for 9 o'clock this evening through Saturday morning due to some stronger winds, 30 mile per hour winds possible, up to 50 mile per hour gusts of wind. So it's going to be quite a blustery night. Uh, plan on northwest winds sticking around for Saturday as well. Uh, when we look at your future wind speeds, it's going to be yeah, kind of a chilly day, uh, if not a downright cold day tomorrow with some of the winds and highs dropping. So our next weather maker, yeah, it's this front that's moving through. Uh, generating again breezy winds for your Friday. It's really nice today overall, so get out and enjoy some of the milder temperatures. Mainly mountain showers expected with the front moving in later today, but we could see a spotty shower in the Treasure Valley as well. Uh, of course, the temperature drop we talked about into tomorrow and some additional northwest flow or moisture moving within our northwest flow could generate a few more snow showers as well. So some of the weather advisories that we do have in place to mention the wind advisory for the valley. It also includes the Magic Valley, the Snake River Plain as you head into southeast Idaho, Baker County as well. All of us dealing with some stronger winds. So yeah, I know that our you know, the grill cover always gets blown off no matter what I do with some stronger winds. So batten down the hatches. It'll be a kind of a blustery night as the front moves in plan on again a few 
showers, as I mentioned. The northwest flow behind it will keep temperatures cooler than normal throughout the weekend. We're also tracking a secondary or reinforcing surge of moisture for late Sunday into Monday. This one could bring a little more shower potential here to the Treasure Valley as well. Looking at rain snow showers and much cooler than average temperatures for next week. I mean, it's nice to see a big area of low pressure pushing into the region. It's what, <sighs> it's what we need. showers. Yeah, we yeah. need some rain and snow. Yes, a little bit of that. Yeah, keep your jackets handy. The <laughs> whole right. wardrobe again. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you, Nate. CBS2 and News Talk KBOI, we bring you team traffic all morning long. Let's get a check of what's happening out there in the News Talk Traffic Center with Ron O'Brien. Good morning, Ron. Uh, good morning, Sarah, Nate, and traffic not nearly as exciting or, well, <laughs> crazy as what the weather is going to be here. <laughs> but uh, we're starting off fine, very quiet. It's light traffic. You can see in some of the uh, camera shots. It's uh, even running pretty light near the actual merge point at uh, Meridian Road, 10 Mile. All quiet, non-freeway routes, too. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ron O'Brien. Thank you, Ron. When you get in the car, make sure to turn on News Talk KBOI to 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all your team traffic updates. All right, coming up on CBS 2 News, betting big on the future, Boise State announces a massive overhaul of its athletics facilities. The big upgrades and new additions slated to become a reality soon. But first, COVID cases starting to rise once again. The high-profile outbreak being reported in Washington this morning. All right, we'll move on to our question of the day now. Looking back at yesterday's first, 60% of homeowners who have one don't use it for its original purpose. The answer? Yeah, a garage. Yeah, mine's about half car, half storage. Yeah, a little bit of everything. Like it's a party old furniture. Yeah, it's not good. <laughs> All right, today's question, Sarah. All right, the question is surprisingly, 53% of Americans don't know this about their grandparents. All right, folks, thinking caps on, what is it? On your Friday, welcome back. Local forecast this one for Nampa. Temperatures today should hit mid 70s. It's going to be phenomenal uh, outside as far as the temperatures go. We do have some increasing clouds, some breezy winds today. Tonight, uh, blustery winds continue. 36 will be out of the northwest. In fact, we're going to stick with those uh, northwest winds on Saturday. Look at how much temperature change we're going to see. Just 52 for the high in Nampa on Saturday. Thank you, Nate. Well, new today, we're looking at cases ticking up once again in the U.S. Now, this is according to the CDC's COVID tractor. And as Amy Kiley reports, the number of people now testing positive, they include more and more top politicians. Over the next couple of weeks, we are going to see an uptick in cases. And hopefully there's enough background immunity so that we don't wind up with a lot of hospitalizations. We can already see that uptake in the daily counts, but not yet in the weekly numbers. Cases these days are nowhere near the Omicron peak, and they're holding steady or even declining in some states. But these parts of the U.S. are seeing cases rise. One place with a high-profile outbreak is Washington, D.C. There will be COVID cases among uh, senior officials. There's COVID cases among uh, people who work other jobs, too, of course. Uh, the important thing is that people be protected from severe COVID. These are just some of the top politicians and staff members who have tested positive recently. When news broke of House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's positive test, here's how the White House responded. We have to uh, take serious precautions. We should uh, stay masked up when uh, we feel it's appropriate and just use common sense. But Vice President Kamala Harris was not masked up when presiding over the Senate Thursday. She was in close contact with her communications director before he announced he'd tested positive. The White House says Harris had consulted with a White House physician prior to her decision. But CDC guidelines urge masking after close contact exposures. Now lawmakers are off for a two-week Easter break without having passed a COVID-19 relief package. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. All right, well, here in Idaho, new case numbers are actually some of the lowest they've been in a long time. Our state's positivity rate is at 1.8% this past week. It is up a bit from 1.5% the week before, but still very low, relatively speaking. Uh, the state added 61 new cases yesterday. 4,892 people have now died from COVID complications. 54.4% of people five and up are fully vaccinated here. Well, developing news this morning, Ammon Bundy is in the Ada County Jail this morning, beginning his 10-day sentence. Now, a judge found Bundy in contempt of court for failing to complete 40 hours of community service from a sentence handed down last summer. Now, Bundy, who's running for governor, claims his campaign appearances more than covered the required community service. But the judge said no and told Bundy that he had, quote, made a mockery of the court's order. Now, Bundy was immediately handcuffed after the hearing and taken to jail. Now, besides the 10 days, 
disputes, he was also fined $3,000. And police and Star are asking for help this morning tracking down thieves who stole some equipment from a home construction site. Take a look. These are surveillance photos that show two men uh, stealing stuff from a house that's being built near State Street and Star Road. This was back on March 18th. If you happen to recognize them, have any information about this, uh, be sure to call Star Police. And yes, like we said last hour, you risk the shake of disappointment from Sarah over here <laughs> when you do something like that. Yep. SMH. Nope. Shake I am head. disappointed in those people and they're good pictures. So if you do know anything, again, yeah. just let them know. Yeah. All right. We got a good picture coming yeah. our way for what, like 12 more hours. <laughs> yes, 12 hours. Exactly. And then it just shifts and we're like, like yeah. pulling you back into winter. Yeah. It's, it's an unseasonably cold storm system. <sighs> yes. kind of, yeah. Uh, unique for this time of year, of course, being unseasonal. And it's, it's definitely going to give us a reality check uh, with uh, temperatures and still being in spring when we get these large swings in temperatures as well. So oh, yesterday, 68, it was phenomenal. Felt uh, just uh, the best if you're out and about yesterday in the sunshine. It was clear skies. It's been a nice rebound from the 50 degrees we bottomed out at earlier in the week on Tuesday. We've got another similar swing heading our way with the big drop in temperatures after a nice day today. In fact, 75 is where we're headed uh, for your Friday afternoon. We do have clouds increasing, breezy winds. The front sweeping through this evening will drop us to just 50 degrees tomorrow. Even chillier temperatures next week. 45, a reinforcing storm system late Sunday into Monday, brings us our best chance of seeing some precipitation in the valley. Some rain and snow showers late Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. About 51 on Wednesday, partly cloudy 54 on Thursday. Mountain areas looking at 58 today. Some rain later today, possibly uh, by again. Again, this evening, some spotty rain showers, I should say. The snow uh, showers off and on over the weekend into next week. Temperatures bottom out at 31 on Sunday. Overnight lows will be back down in the teens. So, yeah, nice blast of uh, winter temperatures returning. And then we'll be in the mid-30s uh, through Tuesday, Wednesday. Again, chances of snow lingering into Tuesday as well. And we'll see 41 for the high Thursday. Maybe even some more snow chances for the mountain areas. Yeah, that's definitely going to feel very different oh, come very different. tonight into yeah. Saturday morning. Yeah, I guess we might as well hang around. We mentioned uh, Brennage's closing weekend, yes. so a little bit of snow to finish or wrap things up on the mountain. Well, and it's probably going to be beautiful, too, yeah. to be able to see, you know, that last little bit of snow. You all right, CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI, we bring you team traffic all morning long. Let's get a check of what's happening out there this morning with Ron O'Brien. Hey, Ron. Well, good morning. Uh, doing great. It's very quiet. Everybody get along all right. Volume this time of the morning, not that heavy. Friday mornings can be lighter than usual, too. We'll see if that happens a little later on. 7 o'clock hour typically means busier traffic. But, uh, yeah, nothing big going, even away from the freeways right now. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Ryan. Thank you, Ron. When you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI to 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all your team traffic updates. Coming up this morning, the countdown is on to a historic launch over at Kennedy Space Center. We'll look at what's unique about this particular mission to the International Space Station. Yeah, and later, a delayed opening day isn't slowing down the excitement of Major League Baseball. How some ballpark businesses are getting ready for the big games today. It's 2 News this morning. 6.24 a.m. Welcome back. In a matter of hours, the first all-private mission to the International Space Station, it's expected to launch from Kennedy Space Center. CBS's Daniel Backus has more on this historic event. It's a space mission that has never been done before. Four private citizens blasting off to the International Space Station. And this is a, a real turning point in human spaceflight. SpaceX and Houston-based Axiom are launching Michael Lopez Alegria, Larry Connor, Etan Stibbe, and Mark Pathy on the first NASA-sanctioned fully commercial flight to the ISS. The mission is known as Axiom-1 or AX-1. Lopez Alegria, a former NASA astronaut who has flown to space four times, is the commander. This really looks like a government NASA mission from the outside. And, you know, the difference is it's a private company and these are private customers. The four crew members completed months of training. They'll be carrying equipment and supplies for 26 science and technology experiments to be conducted while aboard the ISS for eight days. They're trying to show that you can have a commercial flight to the station and it not be a joyride. It is serious research. Uh, they hope to get that done while they're up there. And, uh, CBS News space consultant Bill Harwood says training and research are what sets this mission apart from recent suborbital rides aboard Richard Branson's Virgin Galactic and Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin. They're carrying space tourists, if you will, 
on up and down flights just out of the atmosphere and then back down again. This mission is going to orbit. Uh, that is a whole different level of complexity uh, and cost. This historic mission could lay the groundwork to make space accessible for all. Don Yabakis, CBS News, Los Angeles. Show Us Something Good is sponsored by He Gets Us at HeGetsUs.com. All right, well, today we are showing you something good. It's a Friday. We all need that, right? Uh, hey, those of us on the morning shift barely get to see these, especially as the days get longer going into the summer. Beautiful sunset captured over the Snake River. Uh, thanks to Christina for sharing that photo, and I love the reflections along the water. And say hello to Hamper, this little guy living it up like a king on his new bed. Got the crown and all. Hopefully he won't be laying around all day today. Can get out and enjoy some, some warm weather. Uh, but cute little photo there. Thanks, Diane, for sending this picture in. If you'd like to share your photos or videos, head to idahonews.com slash chime in. We'll feature some of these something goods in our newscasts each and every day. Well, still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, getting ready for all day kindergarten. How West Ada is preparing to help kids get a head start on their education. And your primetime lineup tonight starts at 7 o'clock with Undercover Boss, also one of those feel-good shows. Uh, then you've got Magnum P.I. at 8, Blue Bloods at 9, and CBS 2 News back here at 10 o'clock. Yeah, and don't forget about our, about our question of the day. The question is, surprisingly, 53% of Americans don't know this about their grandparents. What is it? We'll read some of your guesses coming up next. News, a seventh week of war in Ukraine, how Western leaders are ramping up pressure on Russia and the growing pleas for more help on the battlefield. Yeah, plus a historic confirmation on the U.S. Supreme Court, how Idaho's delegates are now responding. All right, water warnings going out as well. There's going to be less to go around this summer. One thing experts say you can do now to keep your lawn green in a drought. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. All right, folks, it's Friday. Good morning. Not a bad start to the morning. Temperatures are a little bit above average uh, with southwest flow uh, into the area today. Temperatures still hanging on to 50, in fact, in Boise. 45 in Meridian. Good morning. Caldwell, 44 in the upper 30s for Parma. So, of course, some cold pockets. Ontario, 35 degrees. Uh, looking at uh, uh, 32 in McCall, 22 in Stanley. Good morning, 36 twin. Now, we all are going to see a nice and mild day today ahead of a front. You can see the storm system uh, just moving into the Pacific Northwest. Here's the cold front, not past packing a whole lot of moisture with it, but it is generating southwest flow into the area today. We'll start to see some increasing cloud cover throughout mainly the afternoon, and uh, we're going to see some winds really increase throughout the evening hours, maybe a spotty shower even in the valley, but most of it in the mountain areas as this front moves in. So mild ahead of the front, behind it, certainly going to be quite blustery. We do have a wind advisory and much cool, uh, cooler, if not colder, into Saturday with some lingering mountain snow showers. So soak up uh, what warm temperatures you can today. They're going away. 49 around 9 o'clock, 66 around lunchtime for that dog walking adventure cast and mid 70s. Uh, we'll top out at about 75 here in town. More on the weekend cool down active weather trend uh, heading our way. Details coming up. Thank you, Nate. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBY. We bring you team traffic all morning long. Yeah, a little look at that sunrise out there this morning at your commute along I-84. Everything running smoothly, no incidents or accidents expected to slow you down this Friday. So make sure that when you do get in the car, turn on 670 KBOI to 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all your team traffic updates. Well, we start with the latest on the ground in Ukraine this morning. Authorities in eastern Ukraine, they say 30 people are dead after two missiles hit a train station. Now, the head of the regional military administration says first responders are now reporting dozens of dead and injured. Now, the station, they say, was crowded with thousands of people looking to evacuate. Now, in the meantime, the U.S. and United Nations, as well as the European Union, they are all taking the next steps to further punish Russia economically for its invasion. CBS's Laura Podesta is outside the U.N. this morning with the latest. As horrific images continue to come out of Ukraine, the West escalated its pressure on Moscow Thursday. The yeas are 413. Congress voted to suspend For normal purposes, trade relations with Russia and ban energy imports, reinforcing executive actions taken by President Biden. Adopted. The European Union approved a plan to phase out Russian coal. And at the United Nations, the General Assembly suspended Russia from its Human Rights Council. Russia is not only committing human rights violations, it is shaking the underpinnings of international peace and security. 
The U.S.-led resolution passed 93 to 24. It makes Russia the first permanent member of the U.N. Security Council to have its membership revoked from any U.N. body. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky welcomed the move but reiterated more needs to be done. Ukraine needs weapons which will allow us to win on the battlefield, Zelensky said in his nightly address. And he said the atrocities in the Kiev suburb of Borodyanka are worse than what happened in Bucha. There are many more towns Russia has occupied and more towns it is still occupying. Places where we must assume Russian soldiers are committing more atrocities right now. Zelensky warned Russian propaganda may be staging scenes in Mariupol to blame on Ukrainian forces. Laura Podesta, CBS News. Now, according to German magazine Der Spiegel, German intelligence intercepted radio exchanges between Russian soldiers who discussed killing civilians outside of Kyiv, providing perhaps more evidence of war crimes. Now, Ukrainian officials, they say more than 300 people were killed by Russian forces in Bucha alone. Well, Microsoft says it disrupted a cyber attack by Russian military spies. The tech giant says the hacking group Strontium was targeting government agencies, media organizations, and think tanks in Ukraine, Europe, and the U.S. Microsoft obtained a court order allowing it to take over seven Internet domains being used by the hackers. Well, you're looking live in Washington, D.C. this morning, where the Senate approved Judge Ketanji Brown-Jackson's confirmation to the Supreme Court. Now, Jackson, who will take the seat of Justice Stephen Breyer when he retires in the summer, will become the nation's first black woman Supreme Court justice. Now, all Democrats voted in favor, while just three Republicans broke party ranks to support Jackson. Both of Idaho's senators voted against Jackson's confirmation. Senator Jim Risch said in a statement, quote, her past pro-abortion and pro-labor union rulings make it clear she will not decide cases before the Supreme Court in a conservative manner, end quote. Senator Mike Crapo added, quote, I have serious reservations about her judicial philosophy and willingness to interpret the law as written, end quote. You can read both senators' full statements on IdahoNews.com. Well, the Idaho legislature passed House Bill 790, and now the West Ada School District is working to get things ready for the fall. Now, that bill, it'll fund a full day of kindergarten for the state of Idaho, including the West Ada School District. And now West Ada administrators, they say they're gearing up, hiring more than 30 new teachers. The goal, to provide better, to better prepare the kids for grade school. Research indicates that a comprehensive full day kindergarten program has outlasting or outlonging benefits for our students, um, creating them to be holistically prepared but academically prepared as well for first grade. Now there is no cost to enroll your child in full day kindergarten. Now if you have questions, check out our story on IdahoNews.com. Local irrigation districts are sending out warnings about drought and limited water this summer. The Pioneer District, which serves parts of Canyon and Western Ada counties, says their customers will get about 70% of their normal water amount this year. As a result, water managers are asking people to conserve as much as they can and water their properties on a schedule. That means odd-numbered houses water only on odd days, even-numbered houses water on even days. Irrigation water in that district should be ready to go by April 29th. And what you're seeing here is video from a meeting last night. The city of Nampa trying to educate people on ways to conserve waters. They teamed up with Zamzos uh, for a free lawn care class. Experts say one of the keys is making the adjustments to your watering schedule right in the beginning of the season. If people start early prepping their lawn for a short irrigation system, the lawn is going to do fine. It will go dormant and it can handle the drought. But the key thing is they've got to start adjusting how they water at the very beginning of the season and kind of teach the lawn to, to be accustomed to deeper water and in less frequent. So the Nampa and Meridian Irrigation District starts filling up its canals in about a week. We'll start delivering water within two weeks. Yeah, it's oh, coming yeah. quick, but some good advice that they have, definitely. Yeah. We have that, um, again, that article, if you want to find out more about how to prepare your lawn for that on our website, so you want to check that out, too. Yeah, I mean, definitely you think about, like, you know, humans, we're creatures of habit. You know, if you start doing something and you continue for a long period of time, like you're going to kind of get that habit down, it'll become normal. You won't ever think about it again. Uh, I I think everyone's kind of hope, you know, your lawn behaves the same way if you let it. So uh, 
creatures of habit, I guess. All right, yeah, let's see. We, we have to expect some change, of course, with yeah, the uh, yes. the lack of snow and the water yeah. this year. So uh, we can we can adapt, right? Yeah. We can try to do our, our part to save water as well. Uh, hey, let's talk about uh, the potential of any changes. We've had nice weather yesterday. Today we're starting off quiet and mild. We do have some southeast winds that are going to be sticking around today. Breezy conditions, only about 10 to 15 miles per hour. Uh, but we're going to get stronger winds later this evening. We've got a uh, front moving through. It will blow through some changes into tomorrow. In fact, a big drop in temperature. So, uh, generally, Generally, 20, 25 mile per hour winds, possibly up to 30 overnight uh, into tomorrow morning with a front moving in. Uh, there is a wind advisory for the Treasure Valley again for wind speeds around 30 miles an hour. Could see wind gusts up to 50 miles an hour. So keep that in mind. Uh, could uh, yeah blow some of that backyard patio furniture around. Blustery winds continuing even into Saturday. Uh, generally 10 to 20 miles an hour as well out of the northwest and temperatures are really dropping with that uh, change in the weather pattern. So expect the mild temperatures to go away after today. Mountains are going to see a little bit of rain with this front moving through this evening. We might see a spotty shower in the valley, but the best chance will be over the mountain areas, especially to the north. And then mountain snow showers will continue off and on throughout some of the weekend. So mention the wind advisory. It does encompass all of the Treasure Valley, Baker County and the Magic Valley, even into the Snake River Plain. They're going to have some strong winds, as you can imagine. Mention those 50, 50 mile per hour wind gusts behind the front. Uh, here comes the front. If we put future cast into motion again, most of the moisture staying to the north in some of the panhandle, western Montana. Montana, just clipping our areas with this moisture that's moving through. It opens up the storm door though. A moist northwest flow will continue tomorrow and Sunday, generating a chance for some scattered snow showers. We get another reinforcing surge of moisture, an area of low pressure moving inland as we get into late Sunday, Monday. And that should provide a better chance for the valley of seeing some rain and snow showers into next week. So this is only through Sunday evening. How much snow can we expect to see? Well, unfortunately, there's not a lot in the forecast for the mountain valleys, but hey, the higher peaks uh, have a chance of seeing maybe three to six inches of snow, at least at the highest elevations. So some good news there. Uh, again, we mentioned Brundage packing up shop on Sunday. So yeah, we'll have a little bit of fresh uh, snow, some fresh tracks to be carved out, I think, come Sunday as well. Yeah, not too bad. And heading out this morning, it's very mild out yeah, there. We've got 40s uh, for the most part, even yep. a 50 hanging on for Boise. So not too bad. Yeah, then those breezy winds with that cold front and then the roller coaster really begins. So, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> all right. right. Thank you, Nate. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. Let's get a check of what's happening out there this morning from the News Talk Traffic Center's Ron O'Brien. Hi, Ron. Hi there. Uh, didn't catch the direction, but uh, two vehicle crash reported off on the shoulder near the Cole Overland Interchange. So use a little caution if you'd be hitting that area soon. State troopers were uh, going out to check on one there. But again, off on the shoulder. Merge slowdown showing up a little bit more now. You can kind of see in the 10-mile camera off in the distance to the uh, right corner of that shot that the, some brake lights are coming on. A little heavier traffic and a little bit near Meridian Road now and then, but nothing major going. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ron O'Brien. Thank you, Ron. When you do get in the car, make sure to turn on News Talk KBOI to 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all your team traffic updates. All right, now it's time for our question of the day this morning, one of my favorite parts of the show. Uh, surprisingly, 53% of Americans, so more than half, don't know this about their grandparents. This is a good one. It could be a lot of different things. It could be a things. lot of different things. It says surprisingly, so it makes you think, right. makes you think a little bit harder. You should know. Maybe it's something like, that should be obvious, like their profession, what they did for a job. Yeah, yeah. or where they, they where they were born, where they, where they were born, born. where yep. they grew up, um, yep. where they met. Oh, yes, I like this, Jeff, when they got oh, married. That's when. a great guess. Yes. We were also saying like, okay, okay there's how they met. Robert was kind of on that same page. What about like, we were talking like their birthday yes. or even just how old they are. That's um, a hard one. Sometimes. I forget how old I am sometimes. Yeah, so I, mean, I can't imagine adding more years to or that. siblings. <laughs> yeah, there's so many good questions um, out there. Gosh, I know. I'm trying well, to think. Places they have lived. Yes, that's another oh, one. Oh, yeah, Ed, that's, that's a great guess. Fortunately, mine didn't move around a whole lot. Mm -hmm. So, I th well, I guess. I guess I don't know everywhere they lived. Let's yeah. just say that. But for a long period of time, I knew where they lived. Right. Yeah. I, maybe the moral of the story with all of this is if you don't know the answers to the things that we're throwing out there. Yeah, now is the learn. time to ask. If you've got grandparents living, ask because the yeah. stories are fascinating. Uh, I feel like a lot of times like they live way more interesting lives than we have. So No, it's it's amazing what you can learn from mm -hmm. your grandparents. So if you're sitting here at home today thinking, hey, I don't know this about my grandparents. Like Denny said, it's always important to be asking them. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Love the guesses so far. Uh, keep sharing with us. We've got about 15 minutes to get those guesses in and then we'll share the answer with you right before 7 o'clock this morning. All right, still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, big plans at Boise State, a look inside the school's athletic master village and what still needs to be done before things can get underway.
Hey, welcome back. Local forecast. Uh, this one for Ontario. We have the lower valley. We're all getting uh, pretty comfortable with temperatures into the afternoon as far as 70s, about 73. Increasing clouds throughout the late morning and afternoon. We're going to see breezy winds as well. Tonight, a front's going to sweep through. It'll drop temperatures at about 36 overnight. We'll see much cooler highs on Saturday. Still breezy winds out of the northwest, about 55 in Ontario for the high. Yeah, keep your coats handy this weekend. Thank you, Nate. Well, after a month long delay, baseball teams are getting ready to head back to the diamond. Andrea Kanako in San Francisco shows us that it's not just the major league teams that are getting ready for the big game, but local businesses as well. Take a look. It's the Baja Fish Taco, the Baja Crispy Taco. While Giants opening day is Friday, it was opening day Thursday for Underdogs, a brand new restaurant across the street from Oracle Park. This is the first day. How are you feeling? Excited beyond belief. El Pedio Sai is a managing partner of Underdogs, a locally owned small chain of restaurants. We are born and bred in the avenues of San Francisco, and we're bringing our game here downtown, uh, right across the street from the best, the best show in town. Sai says he's called in roughly 30 employees and ordered 10 times the amount of food and supplies, hoping to hit a Grand Slam Friday. We're born ready, yeah. <laughs> and with the Giants back in town, it also means jobs have returned. I cook for the players, so I'm very excited right now. I'm like, I'm like, I'm, re I'm like, like, I like it's like game day for me, you know. Benjamin Reed also happens to be a lifelong Giants fan. He is thrilled to be serving up dishes to his favorite team once again. They love steak. They love steak. Yeah, they love a lot of beef. Fans have high expectations for a Giants team that got knocked out of the first round of the playoffs. So are we going to see 107 wins? I think so, 100, 105. <laughs> you know, they, they seem to think they, they can get at it again. And have another chance to top the Dodgers. Even Jennifer Cordero, who's from L.A., is on board to chant, Beat L.A. You a Dodgers fan before? Ah, uh, no, never. Oh, okay. Never. <laughs> All right, well, closer to home, Boise State has big plans for the future. The university is going to build an athletics master village to support sports programs, or at least that's the goal. Uh, now, there's a lot to this overall plan, so won't go through all of it, but it does include major upgrades to both Albertson Stadium and Extra Mile Arena, along with several new facilities. Uh, there will be a gymnastics practice gym, a new indoor tennis center, new soccer complex, uh, really so much more to it. It is in the very early stages, though. There's a lot of hurdles that have to be jumped in order to make this happen. They have to get approvals funding, all of that before any of the construction can start. But if all goes according to the plans, has the potential to... I'm stuck on Indoor Tennis Center. How nice would that be? Well, they be? have one. They oh, have okay. the bubbles. They have one they're, oh, okay. they're called the bubbles. The bubbles. Oh, um, yeah, the, the bubbles. bubbles. Yeah, mm -hmm. the bubbles. I know exactly yeah, what you're talking about. Yeah, off Boise <laughs> Avenue, but I think they're kind of wanting to put something maybe a little closer in on campus. And permanent. Okay. Uh, yeah, and uh, not, which I, I do love the bubbles. I was a tennis player growing up and got to play in the bubbles a lot. I just hate it how, so how, how small the ceiling gets as you get close to the edge of the bubble. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've done the bubbles as well, but yeah. uh, I do like the fans that are constantly Nate's the one who's hitting it constantly off the court so the other person's having to go into the like to well, the edge of the bubble. Yeah, the bubble's like a shock absorber, shock absorber at least too. So <laughs> yeah, if you run into uh, it physically, I haven't, you're I haven't okay. been in the bubble yet. I guess here I used to do mm -hmm. it back home, but so fun, um, so fun. All right, Pretty exciting hey, though. Yeah, outside, outside, outside Outsort. tennis today with the temperatures that we're having. Uh, but of course, the winds uh, sometimes an issue of in spring. If you have those indoor bubbles, you're not going to have to deal with the wind. Uh, 68 yesterday. This is the temperature trend or history we've had over the last 10 days. Very up and down, common in spring. We're on the upward trend still for today. In fact, we should be about 75 this afternoon. It's going to be a gorgeous day. Uh, breezy winds and increasing clouds, though. We drop quite a bit on Saturday. In fact, 25 degrees cooler for our highs on Saturday, just 50. Much uh, breezy winds are sticking around about 10 to 15 miles per hour, even 20 towards Mountain Home. And we do have a chance of some moisture. It looks like the best chance will be late Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday for some rain and snow showers here in the valley. Might see a spotty shower with the front later this evening but for the most part, pretty quiet conditions minus the wind. And then we're back slowly warming up into the 50s by Thursday next week. Mountain areas, 58. Again, showers later this evening. Some snow showers often on Saturday and Sunday. Temperatures plummet to just 31 degrees in our mountain valleys for highs. So a cold.
cold start into next week. Scattered snow showers continuing off and on Monday, Tuesday. Temperatures slowly rebounding to the low 40s on Thursday. Again, normal high is 47. So after today, we're below average through early next week. In fact, we could have another storm system Thursday into Friday. So keeping the active trend uh, in place and uh, we need some snow. So we'll take whatever we can get. Unfortunately, it's only looking like maybe three to six inches for some of the mountain areas surrounding the valley through about Tuesday next week. So. Not bad. Looking for rain for us, though. Yeah, well, rain and snow. Yep, we'll have periods of it because we have cold overnight yes. lows and well below average highs. Yeah, no, you heard it here first. Thank you, Nate. Yeah. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. Let's get a check of what's happening out there on your Friday morning from the News Talk Traffic Center with Ron O'Brien. How's it going, Ron? Getting a little heavier volume now, 84, even in the construction zone. Caldwell towards Nampa, a little bit of crowding, a couple of spots. Uh, Caldwell Airport towards Karcher, that can all fluctuate, but it is busying up a little more, and you can see in some of the camera shots that one at uh, Cloverdale looking down towards 184 split. Things are starting to bunch up a little bit at the merge areas. And so things starting to kick in next hour, it will be busier. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Bryan. Thank you, Ron. When you do get in the car, turn on News Talk KBOI to 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all your team traffic updates. And still to come this morning, pedestrian deaths up sharply this year compared to last. We investigate some of the factors behind this troubling trend and show you how the U.S. is working to make roads safer for everyone. S2 News this morning. 654 on your Friday morning. Disturbing trends on our nation's roads. A new report shows both deadly car accidents and pedestrian deaths are on the rise. Daniel Backus looks closer at some of the factors that could be contributing to these troubling statistics. This surveillance video shows two sisters walking on a Florida sidewalk last month. Just seconds later, one of them was hit and killed while trying to cross the street. It's tragic. It's awful. I don't know. I want it to stop. I, I want this to never happen again. Unfortunately, these types of accidents are becoming more common. Pedestrian deaths have been on the rise for a decade, and a new report shows more than 3,400 people were killed in the first six months of 2021, a 17% jump from the previous year. The report confirms what we've been saying for many, many years, and that is we have a pedestrian safety crisis in this country. Pam Shadell Fisher is with the Governor's Highway Safety Association that published the report. She says the rise in pedestrian deaths coincides with a surge in dangerous driving, including speeding. You have that mix of speeding vehicles with people on foot. The higher the speed, the more likely they are to be killed and injured. Another factor, Americans are driving larger vehicles like SUVs and trucks that are more likely than cars to kill a pedestrian. And most of these accidents happen at night. We need better lighting, so the more visible we can make them, the better. Many modern streets are wide with longer blocks and people tend to run across where they shouldn't. The Department of Transportation is now dedicating billions of dollars to making changes for safer road designs, including more crosswalks, bike lanes, and better lighting. Changes that could make the road safer for everyone. Donya Backus, CBS News, Los Angeles. And taking a quick look at gas prices, if you need to fill up this morning, the average here in Idaho is still around the same, about 4.41 a gallon. That's 27 cents higher than the national average. In Ada and Canyon County, it's still a bit more expensive at around 4.52 a gallon. According to Gas Buddy, the cheapest place to fill up, it's going to be the same as usual. Costco has it for 4.39 a gallon. However, Gas Buddy also lists the Walmart on Franklin Road in Nampa and on Overland Road in Boise at the same price. So if you can fill up there, if you don't have a membership. All right. Hey, before we go today on this Friday, we'll get to our question of the day. Uh, surprisingly, uh, this is the key word here, 53% of Americans don't know this about their grandparents. All right, we've been thinking a lot no. of guesses. Hopefully uh, you know them well, but there are some obvious right. things I think maybe you don't know. Like, yeah. Yeah, I think I was sticking with um, maybe where, uh, oh, what did I say? Where they were I don't born. Know, where they were born. Yeah. All right, I will go with uh, their birthdays. Birthdays? Yeah their first vehicle. Ooh, okay. That's pretty cool. Correct answer this morning. Their first names. Yeah. What? First. You names. just call them grandma and grandpa. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Learn that if you don't know it. Have a great day. We'll see you back here at 11 today. Take the news with you on the radio. News Talk KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. CBS Mornings is coming up next. 
And watch for your next local newscast on CBS2 today at 11. Connect with CBS2 for local news and weather on IdahoNews.com.